All right, we made it to Colossians in our daily study. Um, this is one of the original books that I actually had planned to do. A Bible study first, on, yeah. yeah. When we so then you went I had, to the Beatitudes. Yeah, and then we went. Yeah, we went through Matthew and then went through the letters backwards, and so now we're here at Colossians. Take a moment to say a quick prayer. And then if there is anything that we can do at all to help, to serve, to counsel, uh, questions to answer, things to clarify, please reach out to us and let us know. If you're in need of a Bible, if you need something that you can have, you know, in your hands, that you can be studying. There's something about studying out of a paper Bible that is just, I think, far better than the one on your phone. But if you need anything, please let us know. Go to APHomeChurch.com and all of our info, you can contact us. Um, everything is there. Yeah, all that good stuff. Okay. Colossi, um, in the time of Paul and even before then, when he was going through, was really, really rich city. And it was Twin Cities with Laodicea, which is, it was, it's like 10 miles difference between Laodicea and Colossi. They're in the, the same same general area obviously but they were both extremely extremely wealthy cities and we see um, in Revelation 3 the letter to Laodicea uh, that's going to be the lukewarm church yeah right because they it's Not interesting good. because Christ says that you know you think that you're rich and you say that you have everything you're, you need but you don't realize that you're poor blind and naked mm -hmm. um and it's it's real funny when you when you learn the um, the back history of Laodicea and Colossae in this area, and you learn that a lot of the things that he says here in the letter in Revelation three are directed to um, different things in that city, like the ointment for the eyes, mm -hmm. um, like their wool. He says that I advise you to go. Uh, buy white garments from me so you won't be ashamed by your nakedness in there too and they were known for their black wool production mm -hmm. and so that's really that's funny and then um, Laodicea and both Colossi were destroyed in 60 AD under Nero by an earthquake and it's interesting because Paul and they refused imp, uh, imperial help to rebuild both cities. They're like, no, nuts. don't need it yet, yeah, which is crazy that the 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 residents of both cities rebuilt their own uh, their own cities from the ground up, and so quickly that Paul's letter to Colossi was probably around in sixty two. So there was the the population good. was still moving going and obviously had everything up and running in just a few years but i mean think of the reality of that i mean if you look at like you know a beverly hills neighborhood or something like that where if an earthquake came in and destroyed a bunch of homes those people are so wealthy that they could go ahead and have it all fixed up and taken care of before the insurance payments got around to coming through. You know what I mean? Like, that's the right. same type of idea there. Yeah. Uh, Colossians always has been, always fascinated me. I'm not going to call it my most favorite book ever for today right now. Sure. But it's always fascinated me just because, uh, they say always, <laughs> but it's fascinated me because it's very very applicable for the state of the church where we are today yeah as as a whole and being that La laodicean church with being lukewarm and then getting into which again i'm, I'm talking about colossians and i'm refer referencing laodicea the the fact that they were as close together as they were and they they're, they might as well have been the same city as far as that goes okay but i mean we do that look at like i mean we're we do Southern that all California. the time too. yeah like yeah we you do say that, los yeah. angeles but th you're really talking like about west Covina or cities. something yeah, yeah like exactly. they're all but yeah it's LA. yeah it's la yeah exactly so that's that's the way that this this kind of was but uh they were both granted 
uh, the status by the Roman Empire status of free cities. And so they were kind of under their own little, um, not their own self governing, of course, because they were. They, well, still Rome, but. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say, you know, probably the. It's more like a territory of Rome, but they still had their own thing. Yeah, kind, but they. Like yeah, area. but like, you know, enough to where they didn't, you know, Rome wasn't occupying. Yeah. Um, they were that successful. Cities. Right. But there was a lot of Romans that lived in, you know, sure. in the area and stuff too. So it wasn't like they weren't. But they were granted the status of a free city. Uh, so that makes it, to me, it's just interesting because it's it seems to tie in with our American way of life. In the way that they ran and the way that they did things. They were very hardworking, wealthy, um, very, very intelligent people. Mm-hmm. They were extremely, extremely knowledgeable it was it was something of a you know you, you were there was something wrong with you if you weren't yeah you know ultra intelligent in this area they obviously the Greeks are where we get <laughs> like everything, everything from, from. Yeah. but um, so all of that just to I didn't mean to, this is probably the longest introduction of one that I think that we've had but to give you an idea of who these people are that he's talking to. Yeah, to give the and what it means for us cuz there's so many parallels between their day and mm-hmm. our day now. And obviously that's what we do here is I like making these things about what does this mean for us today? What is Paul speaking to us today? If Paul was if Paul was here dealing with these issues in the church and dealing with these things that are happening you know what? What? What would he be saying? What would he? Because obviously they're they're the same type of issues that were happening here, but now we're we're we have different things, obviously that that we're dealing with here now that that even Paul wasn't. But we but, see the ways to deal with those. And yeah, overall, you can say what was going on in the context of when this was written, and what of this. And how does that apply to us today? If nothing is new under the sun, you see these same issues, same problems. Humankind's going to be humankind, and here we are again. Yeah, I think um, Colossians one fifteen. I won't go ahead of myself and read it, but the Christ being supreme overall. It is these... A lot, a lot of these Gnostic sects were coming in to these these areas and teaching and trying to mix all of this stuff in, especially with Jesus. Um, and a lot of them downplayed the the divinity of Christ. Mm-hmm. So they were saying, "Oh, okay, yeah, he was, but he was just a regular human, or he just wasn't exactly like what the Jehovah Witnesses or something." Or, mm-hmm. uh, those types of groups would say today you know yeah. like okay, well, he wasn't really god he wasn't he, you know he was he was a man and yeah god sent him but he wasn't really god mm-hmm. um, paul definitely takes care of that in this verse but he does it in such just a beautiful way i think that just um just paints a picture of christ that you realize that when you read through all of scripture you tend to read this in a way of through through the eyes of Christ being there this whole time so I guess I won't ramble on anymore and we'll just read and we'll get there all right verse 1 this letter is from Paul chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and from our brother Timothy We are writing to God's holy people in the city of Colossae, who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. May God our Father give you grace and peace. We always pray for you, and we give thanks to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all God's people, which come from your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You have had this expectation ever since you first heard the truth of the good news. The same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understand the truth 
about God's wonderful grace. These, the Colossians, they soaked up the gospel. They went out. They were excited about it. They pre and they were living at first the type of life that looks radically different like than the rest of the world, like it should. You learned about the good news from Epaphras, our beloved co-worker. He is a Christ faithful servant and he is helping us on your behalf. He has told you about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Yeah, Epaphras heard Paul preach in Ephesus, which is roughly like 100 miles somebody will correct me if I'm wrong from this but he heard Paul preach in Ephesus and he just you know he just soaked it up and he went and took it back to Colossae and because um, Paul never directly built a church here in Colossae so that's what mm -hmm. makes it also interesting Epaphras is obviously the one that that uh, planted it and got it, got it going just from hearing Paul's preaching verse 10 then the way you live will always honor and please the lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit all the while you will grow as you learn to know god better and better we also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need may you be filled with joy always thanking the father he has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Verse 15, and this is starting the supremacy of Christ, I think, that goes on when he's speaking of this. I think this is just really, really cool to go to uh, verse 21. He kind of goes at it poetically almost. It's really cool. Uh, verse 15, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is a supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Amen. That was the was the part I was talking about. I love that. Well, and that's such a cool part, I mean, with the kids when we were reading in Genesis that mm -hmm. God created the heavens and the earth, you know, starting there from the very beginning, and then you look here in Colossians, and it was by him, for him, through him. Exactly. You know, you see all of that, and that's where you say, yes, Jesus shows up, in Genesis 1. Mm -hmm. It's not just when you see this baby in the manger that all of a sudden Jesus is on the, the biblical scene. That's not it. And here, you know, kind of clarifying and going into this, I think it's really cool not only for us to understand, but for our children to to understand as well. Right. And then, I mean, John, th John 1, 3 goes into it too when he yeah. says that not anything that was made was made without... So he was... Yeah, he was there the whole time before all of this. Mm -hmm. um, but going into to 21, uh, he's saying that he has, the, the last verse in 20 is saying that he has made peace with everything in heaven on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Uh, and then 21 goes into, this includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. 
Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in a physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But you notice it says that you were once far away from God. So he made peace with everything in heaven on earth by the means of his blood on this cross, but there's coming to him and coming to the cross... There's a lot more to it than just free salvation for everybody. Yeah. Because Paul states that you once were far away. You once were doing all these things completely against. And the reason of why the blood had to be spilled to begin with. Yeah. So it's not something that you just keep on doing. But he's saying here that obviously you you once were fall away, far away. Yeah. But he's done all of this for you. Because, yes, salvation is for everyone, but you have to come to have it. Right, but, yeah. So that, I just wanted to throw that one in there before. Yeah. Well, in here, when you get ready, he's going to go into it even more. 20, yeah, that's why I wanted it yeah. to keep going. 23? Yeah. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. I'm glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now has been revealed to God's people. For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing in his glory. Yeah, the... the um, He's, he's the full, that would be the full message is that the Gentiles too share in the glory. And that was something that was completely alien from Israel because Israel knew that all of God's promises were meant for Israel. And mm -hmm. that was it. They, they, they once, they viewed the Gentiles as people on the outside, like, oh, too bad. So sad sucks for them. It was a very clear line in right. many ways. But that's why that this is such a huge mystery because this just blows the minds of a lot of Jews. That you're wait a minute, you're you're including the Gentiles along in with mm -hmm. all of us awesome people, and you not so awesome, you know. <laughs> well, that's where I think we kind of take this part for granted because we all just understand that anyone can come to Jesus. Right. But him saying this here in this time it's was huge. like this huge secret. That had been alluded to, and you know all these yeah, different things. Yeah, we read it. We go secret. What's the secret? It's a secret. It's like that was the secret. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Verse twenty-eight. So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God, perfect in their relationship to Christ. That's why I work and struggle so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. I'll close out one, going into two, because he pretty much flows, so I won't yeah. talk too much. I want you to know how much I have agonized for you and for the church at Laodicea and for many other believers who have never met me personally. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Not yet, but yeah, I mean, if it wouldn't have been for everything that he went through, well, we wouldn't be reading this letter right now. <laughs> so, verse 2. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Christ mm -hmm. lie all the hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Nobody else. Mm -hmm. No church fathers. No traditions. Nothing. 
Christ alone. Christ alone. And that is the huge stumbling block. We've seen that. We saw that this week. Uh, we see that all the time, though, is, is Christ is always the stumbling block yep. for people. Anything that puts Christ in the back seat. Or you need something else in addition to. In addition to. to. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Christ, of course, he's everything. But yep. this nope. or that. No. Christ is nope. it. Nope. That's it. And that's what... That's what the mysterious plan is, mm -hmm. is the fact that all of this that we know and that we see and all of this behind the scenes work and everything that you saw is Christ. Yeah. Who I am, who you are, Christ. Yeah. And he's in everything. He is everything, everything. And if there is anything that tries to point you either off of your off of Christ or says you need something else other than just Christ alone it's an antichrist yes and it's evil and get away from it and don't listen to anything or anybody that puts Christ in the back seat or tries to to lessen the role of of Christ that's mm -hmm. Cause that's the other that's the other thing too is is a lot of other, uh, a lot of other uh, groups I guess I should call them. I want to be careful with my words. Uh, a lot of other groups will go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we acknowledge Christ, all that stuff. But then they'll slip in something else, like a long mm -hmm. end. So you have to be you have to be real careful. Say that. In verse four here, Paul tells you exactly why I'm telling you this so no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments mm -hmm. because they will and they will sound intelligent and they will sound like and they will be condescending and they will make you sound like you're in make you feel look and sound like an idiot uh, in in whatever case it is and but that's it's always a surefire way to tell it's just it's almost like uh, you know, uh, well, exactly like Paul said, they're well-crafted arguments. So we'll leave it at that. For though I am far away from you, my heart is with you. And I rejoice that you are living as you should and that your faith in Christ is strong. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. This is something, obviously, that uh, Colossae and Laodicea didn't do, because 30 years later in Revelation, when Christ gave his revelation, um, Laodicea was the lukewarm church, and they, so they did not let their roots grow down into him and let their lives be built on him. It was all, it was all exciting and fun and everything at first, but then... Mm -hmm. You know, just like, uh, unfortunately, many people, when they first hear the gospel, and then it just kind of, it kind of reach like a, just a dull point, and don't really go anywhere with it. Yeah. Parable of the sower and the seed. Exactly. Verse 8. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that came from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Human thinking. Human thinking that came from spiritual powers. And this is what Paul was talking about too in Timothy when he said that later on they will people will follow teaching of demons. Yeah. And that's what these are. And they're not they're not as obvious as people think that they are. We're not talking just about the after Satan club here. Yeah. We're not talking about the uh, drag queen hour at the library. This is not what we're talking about. These things are, those are obvious, so of course. But you think of those in the, um, you know, you think of of evil and spiritual powers. And I said, you know, I've said it before. It's like the Antichrist king, you know, it's the anti-kingdom. Yeah. So it's, it's still a kingdom. He still has an order of a kingdom in the way of, of foot soldiers and different things like that, like you, you can you can sort of think of it like that. 
Okay, well, the foot soldiers are the ones that are doing the obvious work, like the, you know, like this, the, the drag queen hour or the after Satan club. Like, the, that's, those are the obvious ones. Yeah. Those are the weak ones. Those are the ones that are just bad. Those aren't the ones that we're talking about. We're talking the ones that are in higher, higher levels. The ones that look, matter of fact, the ones that are in churches. Yeah. They're all, that's what this is because these philosophies, these thinkings, these ideas and different things have weaseled their way into churches, into these groups, into different things like that, and have completely um, taken people captive, uh, and Satan has their minds bound so they won't have any other understanding other than the trap that they're they're in. So you, you really got to watch out for the ones that just don't look obvious. And the ones that sound intelligent. And you're like, man, that's really, really good. Because sometimes it's really difficult. And again, this is why every single thing must be weighed based off of the totality of Scripture. Not human thinking, not what your priest said, your pastor said, the speaker, this book, whatever. What does Scripture say? Well, you must be able to do that. And the other, the other part of what Paul wanted to communicate here too is is uh, is Christ. If yeah. if anything, as I just said, lessens the role of Christ or tries to put him in a back Wrong. seat, done. it's done. That's not. That's never at or any that point. That is the teaching of demons. Yes, because. Christ is everything. Yes, and, and we always just has went been. through this whole supremacy of Christ being. Yes. Look, there's nothing else, mm -hmm. nothing. So, verse, honey, you need to help me. Uh, I think you're on eleven. Is that right? I I just asked you this question. I got kind of carried away there for a I minute. I know. <laughs> Maybe nine. All right. Let's go for nine. If not, we'll leave this in here. Normally, we would edit a moment like this out, but I think... Yeah, this we'll is just all, leave it. Let's go nine. Is, we'll leave it. Well, see, we've read this so many times, and I have this area, like, so heavily highlighted, <laughs> and then we were talking. I think, just go nine. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, because I think I was still... I think I stopped. You stopped, and then you messed me up, so yeah. verse nine. All right. For Christ... For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. Torah observant people. Verse 17, or I'm sorry, Torah observant only ism, I guess. What's the, what's the name for it? Yeah, I guess that would be it. But I mean, this is very serious. It's, you have it's to very, take... very serious. Yeah, it's not. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to say that like that. If but... you want to keep a kosher diet, keep a keep kosher it. diet. Must you and keep I've... a kosher diet? No. And Must I've you said be vegetarian, whatever. Many, many, many times that I am a hundred we celebrate the fees we do all of that so i'm 100 mm percent -hmm. supportive and if people are are torah pursuant mm -hmm. that's awesome and i love it and i'm completely supportive of that if you want to do all of those things totally cool but I mean, teaching or implying that you if you really love god should be doing these things no you're missing the whole point Right, if you're wanting to get culture, culturally closer to your Lord and Savior, because we know that your Lord and Savior was a real man, and he has Hebrew blood. So that 
that in itself is like, man, I want to learn everything about the Hebrews. This is mm -hmm. the Messiah's Hebrew. Mm -hmm. 17. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come, and Christ himself is that reality. Don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on poised self-denial or the worship of angels, saying that they've had visions about these things. Their sinful minds have made them proud, and they are not connected to Christ, the head of the body, for he holds the whole body together with its joints and ligaments, and it grows as God nourishes it. You have died with Christ, and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. So why do you keep on following the rules of the world, such as don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? Such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, poised self-denial, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. I see so strongly, and I know it's on our mind just from the podcast this week, but look at what's come. And I think Travis brought this up during the podcast possibly, but look at the Catholic Church. Look at what has come. Uh, well, it's always it's been rampant for a long time, but what's finally getting some light shed on as far as all of the sexual issues within that church. I mean, that's a church that, I mean, so-called church that really – Put so much as far as the, you know, these self-discipline, punishment, you know, things like that, um, withholding from yourself and all of these different things for the sake of their man-made religion. Correct. And then you see the things that come out of this and it's like, it's exactly what Paul is talking about. And it's because, number one, these teachings are from demons, which it so clearly states when we're getting into these what man says and where these things come from. Um, but they're not doing anything in conquering a person's evil desires. No, no, they don't. Not, I mean, none of it does any good. Not that there's anything necessarily wrong with some of it, but as we were just talking about, yes, I mean, in the Catholic Church, there's, there's definitely points that are go completely against it. And that's just one example. But that's just one example. That's not just that's just not everything. But it's, it's so clear uh, what the what Paul was trying to stress here. And as a church, we just really need to pay attention to it because he's saying he's giving a case for Christ being supreme here, and he's giving a case saying that look, these things from teaching of demons, these things, these ridiculous Human traditions, these people that are going to make you force you to do all these things to say that you're saved and, and to be part of the church all this stuff is going to be coming and and it's bad for business against the world that's why this keeps reoccurring and that's why this will keep reoccurring and happen here and people will always continue to do this and come up with this this system of well well, well, well it's not all like that mm -hmm. you know because it's 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 just bad for the 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 for humanity <laughs> i mean really for just humanity in general i mean this uh, christ and the you know the freedom that christ brings and the forgiveness that he has and that just has to set uh, but lessening his power or just taking it away in general which many different divisions of religion do that many Yep. That puts the power shift somewhere else, and we can work with that. Yep, we can sure, profit. Sure, sure. You that. back, yeah, yeah. You back Christ off a little bit in any way, and look how they're prospering. Exactly, and you do that in any way. And my, and, and I think one of the biggest ways that when I was saying be careful, don't look for just the after Satan club, is making this kingdom now pushing off Christ. You know, Christ's return even. Mm -hmm. um, saying, okay, well, yeah, he's going to come back from heaven. Well, we don't need to worry about that. We need to worry about this, and we need to worry about our, our social order and, and these types of things. That's the type of stuff that you need to be careful with. I'm not mm -hmm. saying all of it is, is like that because there's many good things that come from even people that have different views on the way that this is that say that, you know, Christ's coming isn't going to be as soon as we think it's going to be later. So they, they still do a lot of good, but... 
there's also a very very good chunk of it that is doing the exact same this is where it's putting christ's role back a little bit and putting us forward Mm -hmm. somehow so these are these are things that we have to to really be careful for Um, but we'll uh be back with chapter three three and four tomorrow yeah dive further into these things so thanks guys for hanging out with us and hopefully it was something of help and we'll see you guys next time